Have you ever given someone a gift that they didn't want or didn't need? Kind of like giving a bald man a hairbrush. It's awkward. Well, many times organizations give gifts in the hopes of, of solving society's challenges, but they're not what they ask for and they're not what they need. I used to work for a big software company, and I worked closely with the United Nations and was upfront and personal with sticky situations like climate change and corruption and access to education. And according to the UN, we still have half of our population living in poverty. We have a billion people that don't have access to electricity. We have almost 70 million people that are displaced. These are big asks. And these are big needs. A few years ago, I was on my way to the Middle East after a phone call from our giving team that they were going to give mobile phones to Syrian refugees. And this is something that we saw daily in the news and the photos. I was feeling incredibly proud and also quite anxious as I'd never been in a refugee camp and in this scenario. Early in the morning, we set off driving north and it is dry, and it's dusty, and you're seeing the signs, and you know you're eerily close to Syria. The first thing that happens is we get a security briefing. So we understand how the military, the UN, government, nonprofits rapidly built this refugee camp in the middle of the desert. That's now 90,000 people. This is a city. There's water, there's sewage, there's electricity, albeit only for a few hours a day. We set out into the camp, and the first thing that I notice is there's all these young men almost hugging the fence with their mobile phones. And I said, what are they doing? They said, oh, they're trying to get the Wi-Fi from the offices on the other side of the fence because there's no connectivity in the camp. Huh. And in one word, it's hectic. It's colorful and vibrant. Each section of the camp is given a color and a theme, and refugee graffiti artists would paint all the sections of the walls so you knew where you were. We have meetings with groups of women, men, community centers. We learn things like there's only eight schools in the camp right now, so at least 10,000 kids aren't able to go to school. We meet with a group of about 15 individuals that had not met until their journey across from Syria in different backgrounds, from an electrician, a taxi driver. But they all came together, and they wanted to learn a mapping software so that they could map the camp, and they could learn where's the closest hospital, or sometimes, more importantly, where's the next football match, or as we say here, soccer. And now they wanted to learn more software so that they could help the 3,000 shops be more effective in their business. 3,000 shops. So as we walk down what they call Champs-Élysées, trade is vibrant. The first thing that I notice as I'm trying to hide the sounds coming from my tummy is this incredible smell. And I look over and this man is making fresh bread on this stone. And I walk over and he's making falafel and fresh vegetables and wraps, and I'm wondering, where are you getting the fresh vegetables in the middle of the desert? We order food, and we go to pay. And the man says, no, my dear, you're our guests. So we continue to walk down, and we see different shops from a hardware shop. We can buy paint in a wheelbarrow. There's a homemade perfume shop. There's a shop you can rent your wedding dress. And there's a mobile phone shop. I can buy every accessory that I need. Headphones, cases, phones. I was absolutely overwhelmed, but mainly because I didn't know why we were there. We were there to give phones, right? We did no due diligence. We didn't visit, we didn't ask, we didn't understand the needs. We didn't understand the complexities like electricity and connectivity. I was really uncomfortable, and that pride that I felt quickly melted into embarrassment. 
Our organizations, big, small, local, global, have the ability to meet these society needs and they're falling short. To have value and impact, every company should treat their giving with the same rigor as the rest of their business process. A company would look at their giving and align it to their mission and strategy. What are your goals, metrics? If you're a financial advice firm, let's look at financial literacy. If you make homes, let's look at affordable homes. Do what you do, but with a social conscious, with, with metrics and accountability. An organization would look at the ecosystem and infrastructure for their giving. Is the community involved? In this case, if we gave phones, is there electricity? Is there connectivity? Are there apps for these phones? What if they get stolen? Now, I just met a group of 15 software developers that were eager to learn, but I wasn't there for that. I was there to give phones. An organization would listen and learn. You've got this incredible opportunity to learn about an environment that's unfamiliar to you. For displaced people, besides food and shelter, we didn't understand what they needed. Language translation, translation. Connectivity not just to stay in touch with your loved ones, but to build your business. We can learn, stay relevant, grow our business, while not taking away from the local economy. Those phones never got into the country. The large mobile phone providers lobbied the government because it was going to take away from their business. Now, the good news, that same software company shifted the process. And I just got off a plane last week from visiting this project in Malawi in a refugee camp in southern Africa. And the first thing that we did is we formed a group of what we called refugee ambassadors that were part of every decision that we made, and we learned from them. We learned big issues like food distribution. What they would do is they would put a piece of paper on a tree. Now, if you saw that piece of paper, and you were the lucky ones, you would wait anywhere from 2 to 12 hours to get your food. If you didn't see that piece of paper, you didn't get your food for the month. The next thing we did is looked at the ecosystem. Who are the local partners? Is there a safe place to go? Are there chairs, computers? What needs to happen to make sure that we can get this done? And lastly, does this align to our mission and our strategy, which is empower every individual with world-class software? 18 months on, we have a software development center run by refugees Monday through Friday, there are classes for at least 20 people in them. And 18 months on, we've got four apps built. So that food distribution, that piece of paper on a tree, they now get a text message that says, show up on Wednesday at 2 p.m. and families are fed. That's impact. That's value. Organizations have tremendous opportunity if they look at their giving and treat it with, with with the same rigor as the rest of their business process. So as you go to work tomorrow, or as many of you start your own businesses, or you get on that airplane, let's land, learn, absolutely make sure that these gifts truly keep on giving. Thank you.